U.S. President Donald Trump has acknowledged for the first time that he knew about the payment to Stormy Daniels. The admission comes after the revelation by his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, that the president reimbursed the payment to the adult film actress by Michael Cohen. Joining me live now from Los Angeles is John Jordan, Republican strategist and former U.S. Navy intelligence officer. John, some pretty extraordinary stuff. I noticed as well Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she said, well, we, you know, give out the best known facts that we have at the time. Well, yes, it is extraordinary. It was unfortunate that perhaps uh, that Ms. Huckabee Sanders was not involved in the decision to disclose that. That was disclosed by President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani. Um, here, we clearly had, the president clearly had some facts that were not on his side. The payments were made to Ms. Daniels that was going to come out. It's elementary in, uh, in crisis communications to be able to control the terms in which your bad facts, so to speak, come out. And I think that was what Mr. Giuliani was thinking. And to also point out in such a way that, depending on how the payments were made, that that was not not necessarily a violation of U.S. law, even though it was perhaps, uh, you know, it's a little unsightly. And yet it shows, does it not, that he lied about this? And does it mean that we should believe what Stormy Daniels has to say? Well, it's not clear that he lied yet. Um, we don't know how much the president knew and when that he when he knew it. Um, you know, obviously he's a vastly wealthy man. He pays he pays lots of lawyers, lots of money. How much he knew about the structuring of that payment really isn't clear. It also really isn't important. Um, let's step back and the, all the hubbub and all the furor of the media narrative in this United States has all started off about uh, collusion with Russia. But now the now the media is down, reduced to going after the president. President's private life. This is really little different than what Ken Starr did to President Clinton in 1998, um, and the Democrats then rightly said, that, you know, these are process, these are process issues. These are unsightly. This is unsightly, but it really doesn't rise to to high crimes or misdemeanors. All right. So, what of the ongoing investigation into Russia and how Donald Trump is weathering that, and what we know about that so far? Well, there is nothing to say. I mean, not even the Democrats on the, on, on the relevant committees in the Senate are saying that there's any evidence whatsoever of, of President Trump committing any sort of crime involving the Russians. More to the point, the, the term collusion is thrown about so much in this country, but collusion isn't a crime. In, this, in, this, in Western countries, you know, law enforcement is there to investigate crimes, but here they were just sent to investigate a person in the hopes that they might unearth something. That's what it looks like. But the ostensible purpose of this investigation, uh, malfeasance with regard to the Russians, um, there is no evidence whatsoever that there is, and nobody is even credibly claiming that there is. So now we're reduced to the president's sex life and discussing that. There's also, though, I guess the way this has happened, the way Trump has not been afraid to fire any given person along the way, how he's treated the, the institutions. Uh, do you not think that this latest revelation for some voters would be, they've got to wonder, you know, what Donald Trump stands for, what he did know, whether he was lying? Well, let's just let's use history as a guide here. Going back to, again, 1998, when President Clinton was being investigated by Ken Starr and the, Repu the shoe was on the other foot. It was the Republicans investigating a Democrat president for what, in effect, was, you know, was sexual indiscretion and arguably the crime of perjury. President uh, Clinton was impeached, but Americans kind of reared up that year and got tired of it and said, hey, look, you know, this has nothing to do with me or the job that he's doing. The economy's booming. The country is safe. Uh, uh, world peace is on the march. Um, wh why are we doing this? This looks like political headhunting. Everybody knows that Donald Trump is, is kind of a wild man. He's had a wild past. That, that's baked into the cake. That's nothing new there. Just like Dem Republicans and Democrats knew in the 90s that President Clinton was a ladies' man. That had all come out before when he ran for election in initially in 1992. So here it's kind of the same thing, where there's no there there that the American public doesn't already know. And what about all the, the meetings? You said, you know, no evidence of collusion, but the meetings between Trump's campaign team and Russian sources as well. I mean, I take what you say about, you know, going all the way with proof, but when you're looking from the outside, there might be a few levels below that where, at the very least, you'd be raising some serious eyebrows. 
Well, no, there, there's, there's one meeting in particular which attracted attention. That was a Trump Tower in New York, and that was a Russian lawyer by the last, or Veselnitskaya. And she visited the, the Trump Tower. They were all trying to lobby uh, the, the president-elect, and in fact, candidate Trump then, on the Magnitsky Act, which is a, causes real heartburn for President Putin of Russia because it, it bars certain individuals from accessing the U.S. banking system and so forth. And that's caused the Russians a lot of trouble. And there are a lot of Russian... Russian lawyers that may or may not have had any connection whatsoever with the with the with the with the Kremlin, um, were trying to lobby the American government on that issue, and they still are because it causes them such difficulty at home. Do you really I mean, think, though, I mean, in this type of country, the way and actual interference? Yeah, but the, the way. Election. Sorry to jump in, John, but John, but the you know you say that lack of connection. I mean, this is Russia. There's not much that the government doesn't touch, is there? Yeah, there is. You have private citizens, private actors in Russia. In this case, Ms. Veselnitskaya, she approached the Trump team and she was to wanted to talk about the Magnitsky Act, which is, again, a huge problem for the Russians. And she dangled out. She said, well, we may have dirt on Hillary Clinton. And when she didn't, she just turned, when it was exposed, this was just a lobbying effort, um, everybody kind of left. So there is no real, again, no real evidence of anything. This is, these are allegations of what may or may not happen in a meeting, but the Russians are forever trying to lobby our government on the Magnitsky Act. But just again, you, you don't think that there's often and almost always a link between anyone of power in Russia and the government? No, I mean, Russia is really, I'm a, I'm a Russia expert. Russia is a very complicated place. And to say that the Russian government is monolithic and uh, it, it really doesn't work, that Putin is all powerful, it doesn't work. Right. There's a lot of different factions inside of Russia, business interests that have different relationships with the government. Sometimes they may be doing something without the knowledge of the government, just on their own hook. So you, it's, 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 over simpli it's, it's, it's too simplistic to say just because a Russian was involved, therefore, you know, ipso facto, it was the Russian government. All right. We'll continue to follow and, it all very closely, John point, Jordan. Again, Thanks, there's, there's, yeah. I mean, my pleasure.